Good evening, and welcome to Grace, and welcome to those of you who are joining us online. Boy, Good Friday. Do you realize that this is the day 2,000 years ago that literally altered the history of the world? Think about it. Good Friday, the events that transpired on Good Friday literally altered the history of the world when Jesus Christ took his place upon that cross for our sin. Do you realize that your sin stopped Jesus' heart? That's a somber, sober thought. And Good Friday is a somber day. Uh, it, it's hard for it to be anything but. And so we gather together as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ to reflect back on what took place on that cross 2,000 years ago. What was the price that he paid for us. What did my sin deserve? What was it like to be the object of God's wrath upon that cross? What was it like for him to take our place? So this evening we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to enter into the story of the crucifixion. So there's going to be a lot of reading of Scripture, and this is really good to do sometimes because you really get a sense of the, the flow of events. And so we've taken snapshots from the different Gospels, and we've pieced them together in chronological order. Stories are great things to hear because it gives us the opportunity to put ourselves in them. Because Jesus' story is an invitation to make him part of your story. That's what Good Friday is all about. We're going to sing in just a moment, but before we do, would you please join me in prayer? Father, thank you for bringing us to this point in the year where in the midst of a pandemic, we get to be together as a church family. Not like last year, but this time we get to be together, worship together, and be able to reflect together on what you did for us 2,000 years ago. We're so thankful that you altered the course of history at that moment in time, and you are still altering the course of people's lives today because of what you accomplished on the cross. We thank you for that, Lord, and we want to see more people's lives changed because of it. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you please stand with us as we sing the power of the cross?
Ow. דת מרלן, הנה נטו משיחה, ברא דהלהה. עני ענה. גודפה! And when Jesus was in Bethany at the house of Simon the leper, a woman came to him having an alabaster, alabaster flask of very costly fragrant oil. And she poured it on his head as he sat at the table. But when his disciples saw it, they were indignant, saying, Why this waste? For this fragrant oil might have been sold for much and given to the poor. But when Jesus was aware of it, he said to them, Why do you trouble the woman? For she has done a good work for me. For you have the poor with you always, but me you do not have always. For in pouring this fragrant oil on my body, she did it for my burial. Assuredly, I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done will also be told as a memorial to her. Then one of the twelve, called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, What are you willing to give me if I deliver you, him to you? And they counted out to him thirty pieces of silver. So from that time he sought opportunity to betray him. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye is wasted from grief, my soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my iniquity and my bones waste away. Because of all my adversaries, I have become a reproach, especially to my neighbors, and an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have been forgotten like the one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel. 
For I hear the whispering of, my, of, of many, terror on every side, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. Then they came to a place which was named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he took Peter, James, and John with him, and he began to be troubled and deeply distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even to death. Stay here and watch. He went a little further and fell on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Then he came and found them sleeping and said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away and prayed and spoke the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again. For their eyes were heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. Then he came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Now the chief priests and all the council sought testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. For many bore false witness against him, but their testimonies did not agree. Then some rose up and bore false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another made without hands. But not even then did their testimony agree. Immediately in the morning, the chief priests held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council, and they bound Jesus, led him away, and delivered him to Pilate. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered and said to him, It is as you say. And the chief priests accused him of many things, but he answered nothing. Then Pilate asked him again, saying, Do you answer nothing? See how many things they testify against you. But Jesus still answered nothing, so that Pilate marveled. <clears throat> Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, and he was crushed for our iniquities. Our punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. The worship team is going to lead us in the hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Oh, oh, oh. 
After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Serene named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes and cast lots. And sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two robbers were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't, but he can't even save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we, will, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. For the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. Pastor Shirk asked me if I could just take a few minutes to sh share why Good Friday means so much more to me this year. I, t I typed it up because I don't want to forget and get nervous. I think the reason the day means so much more to me now is that I understand it better. I've learned so much over this past year from reading, studying, and attending services at Grace. And being baptized, I now feel like I am part of God's family and part of this family. Obviously, I always knew what happened on Good Friday, but it was not until recently that I fully grasped the magnitude of what Christ did for me. I never really used to think about it too much, maybe because I just didn't want to. I didn't want to own the truth that it was my sin sitting on his back as he dragged that cross. My heart aches at the thought of the torture he endured for me and for us. His love is overwhelming and humbling. I've come to realize there was absolutely nothing I could have done to gain forgiveness apart from Jesus. Because of what he accomplished on that cross, I can live fully free and be welcomed into his kingdom. So if he asked me why Good Friday means so much this year, I would have to say because my heart and my life have been changed. Just about everything is different. Praise God, I'm figuring it all out.
Well, we can be awfully good at accumulating all kinds of junk in our life. And maybe you can relate to the dumpster fire that you just saw on the screen, where those, those words and those, those hurts and the heartaches just keep flipping through your mind. And you really don't want to stop and take too long to think about it because it can really be overwhelming. We've all been there. And that's what Good Friday is all about. Because it was in that overwhelming, crushing weight of our sin, whether it's sins that we committed or sins that were committed against us, that Jesus meets us there in the dumpster fire that he wants to pull us out of and rescue us. And you know what he made possible through Good Friday? Let me read you a passage in Isaiah. You saw this depicted in the video with uh, that green plant coming up out of the, the burn pile. This passage is found in Isaiah chapter 61, verse 3. It says that he makes beauty from ashes, joyous blessing from mourning. You know, that summarizes the Christian experience so well because we, we sometimes live in uh, this, this paradox where on the one hand we can be sad and grieved by our sin. Like as we listen to the crucifixion story, we can feel guilt and shame because of that, even though that it's been dealt with and there is therefore no longer any condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. But yet we, we feel that. And so while we mourn and we grieve, and while there is a Good Friday, we know that Easter's coming. See, in order for there to have been a resurrection, there had to be a crucifixion. And so as Christians, as we experience the, the mourning and the grieving for our sin and the times that we've been sinned against and, and hurt, we also experience rejoicing because of the way that God so masterfully uses the dumpster fires of our life to bring new life, to bring redemption, to make all things new. So the verse goes on and, and says that he, he brings joyous blessing from mourning. He brings festive praise from despair that you may be called a tree of righteousness which the Lord has planted that he might be glorified. That's what Good Friday is all about. His death was an investment in you and I. He paid the price for us so that we could have new life in Christ. So we have no way of knowing where every individual here is in their journey with the Lord, where you're at online in your spiritual journey. But we want to be a place where you can find the answers. Because God wrote a book, and he wrote it to you. And the invitation is open just as much today as it was 2,000 years ago. And as you heard from Karen, God is still changing lives. And the power of the cross is undaunted today and still changing lives. It's changed my life and it's changed many of your lives here in this room. So we have an opportunity this Good Friday to be able to reflect back on what Jesus did and how it changes us today because of what he accomplished. Would you pray with me, please? Father, thank you for going all the way to the cross for us. You didn't hold anything back. You shed your blood for us. You paid with your life. Your word tells us that the wages of sin is death. And that's what we deserve. Every single one of us. There is none righteous, no, not one. But, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And Father, we're so thankful that while Good Friday had to happen, that you made the resurrection possible. That we have Sunday to look forward to. And that your resurrection life conquered sin, death, and hell, and the grave, and enabled you to offer us the gift of eternal life. Father, if there's anyone here tonight 
anyone present online that has yet to receive your free gift of eternal life, the forgiveness of sin, to have that assurance that they are, have a right relationship with you and that they're going to spend eternity in heaven. Father, I pray that tonight would be the night where they resolve that issue and they know for certain where they stand before you. There's no more doubt. There's no more questions. There's no more overwhelming, crushing weight of sin and guilt and shame. It's been dealt with. It's been laid at the foot of the cross. Father, I pray that you would work in those hearts tonight, right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we exist as a, a place where you can come and know for certain that you have eternal life, that you have the forgiveness of sin. That's what we're all about here, is making more and better followers of Jesus. So if there is any way that we can help you to do that, it is the highest privilege and calling of our lives to be able to do that. And so you can contact us in many, many ways. You can give us a call. You can private message us if you're joining us online. But we would love to be able to help you to take your next steps. We can't wait for Easter. The resurrection is coming. So I hope you'll join us on Sunday, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. You're dismissed.